In this video, we'll look at graphing the parent function, and the particular parent function I want to look at is a quintic, or y equals x to the power of 5. So we'll start by making a table of values and picking small, easy to solve integers. I'll go from negative 3 to positive 3. And you could do some of them in your head, which I will, but maybe negative 3 you'll want to do on your calculator. Some calculators need brackets, some don't. I'll demonstrate with brackets, because if you're not sure, the brackets will always work. Negative 3 to the power of 5 at negative 3x, the parent quintic, is 243. Is it positive or negative? It's negative. Why? Because we have a negative value to the exponent 5 times, that's going to make 5 negatives. 4 will cancel out, but it stays negative. So the same is going to be true for negative 2. It's negative 2 to the power of 5. We get negative 32. What's negative 1? This one you might be able to do in your head. To the power of 5. 5 negatives, so 4 cancel out, but we're left with negative 1. It's just 1 times 1 times 1. 4 negatives cancel out, but 1's left over. 0 to the power of 5, I hope you can do in your head. That's just 0. 0 times itself 5 times. Maybe also 1 to the power of 5 in your head. That's just 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. It's just 1. And you might start to notice a pattern. If you don't, it's okay. It's 2 to the power of 5. It's positive now, so the answer will be positive. You get 32. Probably you see the pattern, and you wouldn't need your calculator if you did notice the pattern. Just in case, what's 3 to the power of 5? 243. So we have a table for our parent function, and we want to graph it. It's going to be pretty hard to graph all the way up to 243 and make it visible. So I'm probably not going to graph those x equals 3 value or x equals negative 3 values. I think I'll just graph from negative 2 to 2, and you'll see why. Here's x and y axis. I'm going to need a scale. And so I'll put some ticks, and we'll look at the scale in a moment. And you can see why quintics, they go up really fast, and why it makes them hard to graph with any measurable scale. If I, if I made the scale too wide, the graph would be humongous. So at some point I need to make a sacrifice and just graph what I can. All right, so... On the x-axis, I'll have these, I think, go up just by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. There's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. I can't do the same on the y-axis, though, because then I wouldn't be able to see most of my points. So I think on my y-axis, I'm going to go up by 10, maybe, just to give you an idea of the scale here, of how quickly quintics, in our case, the parent quintic, how quickly it grows. Well, there's my scale going up by 10. Again, you can do a different scale on y than on x, as long as it's the same for the whole x-axis and the whole y-axis. Now let's put my points, and again, I'm going to start with negative 2. Is that negative 32? That's about here. And then negative 1 is right here at negative 1. Remember, this is negative 10, so it's really close to the axis here. And then it comes right through the origin at 0, 0. And then it go over to 1, and you're at a height of 1, really close, again, to the x-axis. But then at 2, you jump up to 32. And that's about there. And that's a characteristic quintic shape. So here's what it looks like. It goes, joins like this, and then almost immediately starts curving out. This should be a curve, but hard to see that curve. It's easy to see the curve now, a super steep curve. And same thing on this side. It comes in and starts to curve out, but then it really suddenly steeply increases after one. There's that point. And then it starts to grow really tall, really steep. Well, that's how to graph the parent function when the parent function is a quintic.